Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back. My name is Caleb Hardy and I am from At Crocheting World and this is a collaboration with Annie's Crafts and today we are making some amazing things and I'm super excited because I get to show you how to make it like how cool is that. So today we're making some seasonal gnomes or gnomes if you want to pronounce the G even though the G is silent so don't pronounce the G but like if it's silent why is it there then? That's that's the question we need to be asking. If you don't pronounce the G a gnome, why is it there? But today we're crocheting some gnomes. Gnomes. Today we're crocheting. Today we're learning how to crochet gnomes. And the pattern designer is by Lena. I don't want to butcher her last name. So I'm not even going to I'm not even going to try it. But I will put her name up here as it deserves all the recognition for creating this amazing pattern. Go ahead and clap your hands for a couple seconds. Did you clap your hands? If you didn't clap your hands, go ahead and rewind and clap your hands. Thank you. So I'm going to put, insert the photo here so we can all look at the awesome gnomes we're gonna create. So a quick little note, today's pattern is not going to include the, the tutorial for the hat because the hat is kind of gonna have all these stitches that we already learned in the tutorial. So there's no need for us to go and deep dive into that. That is what the pattern is for. And if you wanna get the pattern, you can go to the description and click the link and get the pattern. Today, we are basically going to learn how to do the body, which is not that complicated. It's just small things that are tedious work. And that's okay because anything worth doing requires a lot of work. We're also going to learn how to make the nose because you know, everyone needs a nose to breathe and stuff. So, and the, of course we have to learn how to do the fabulous beard because what is a gnome without a beard? Would you even call it a gnome or would you just call it a person? A sh like a, a person, a wizard, a, a potato wizard. That's what they would be. A gnome without a, a, but then wizards also have beards. So then again, I don't even know. I don't know. Um, so for the materials for today, we're going to need lots of things like crochet hooks, scissors, yarn, measuring tapes i know measuring tapes like what in the world are we are, are we constructing today i know so i'm going to show all of those in the tutorial not right here when i have to like hold it up above my head and make sure you can see so those will be at the beginning of the tutorial so i'm just mentioning this make sure you have a ruler or measuring tape because i did not mention that when i was showing the stuff I'm trying to like remember back like what did i forget I think I didn't forget anything besides roller and measuring tapes, but if I did, I guess that's just gonna be a surprise for you. Like, surprise, happy birthday. Um, Last note, I, I wanted to make sure I said this. As you can see in the gnome photo, there's only a fall and Christmas version, but don't be afraid to get creative and change the colors add some flowers, make a spring version, make a summer version. Like you can add, do a, do a pink and green version and add little daisies on it. Do a lavender version. Like don't be afraid to get creative. You are an artiste, an artiste. You have to get creative. It's, it's your job to get creative. You know what I mean? Like get the creative juices flowing, like get on a juice diet, but the juice is of creative juices. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. I'm. It's 1 a.m. and I'm tired. Okay, I'm tired. <laughs> I need to go to sleep. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm super excited for all of you to go ahead and do this. But don't forget to like and subscribe and comment notification bell and all these little other things because they be adding new things. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. But yeah, if you're watching this from Annie's crochet account. Make sure you click down and go find my account, Crocheting Worlds, and check me out on there as well. And if you're watching this from my own account, Crocheting Worlds, go to Annie's account and go check them out because this is a collaboration with them and they are letting me show this pattern and everything. So without them, we couldn't have this video. Yeah. So, yeah. Period. Okay. Time for the tutorial. 
Okay, hello everybody. It's time for us to start the tutorial. As you can see, we have a mess a little over here, a little all hibbly jibbly of our materials. But don't mind that because we're going to look at the photo for a second. I can't zoom in anymore because my laptop was getting mad at me. So we're going to... Okay, that works. So I believe I said this earlier, but today we're only going to be working on the body, the, um, the beard, and the nose. The tutorial for the hat will not be shown in today's tutorial, but the hat uses only one stitch, the single crochet, which we, which I will be showing you how to do in today's video. And it's also a pretty repetitive process. So if you do the body and the nose first, that should kind of give you a good understanding on how to do the hat. So now let's look at our materials. Ooh, okay. You see how I zoom in and then the laptop zooms out. Here's the materials we're gonna need for today's video. Take a screenshot, leaving in three, two, one. Okay, so the materials that we're going to need today, that is what this huge mess is for. So today, first we're going to need some Premier Yarn Anti-Pooling Everyday Medley Yarn. So I'm gonna be using this one for the beard. Although I will be using the smaller version because I won't need more than this. I'm going to be using this one for the body. This color is caramel. This is the caramel color. I'm using this for the body. And then this is a good example of what you can use for the hat. There is a Christmas version gnome, so you can use this for the hat. And this color is the... This is the really red. Wow, I love the description of that. It's really red. It's not red. It's really red. So, yeah. You're also going to need some scissors, hashtag scary. I brought our our fairy scissors back for today because she comes and slays every video and it's just a tradition now, she has to stay. I also, we also going to need some of these tapestry needles and these are going to be used for the end when we need to sew things together or sew in our ends. A 4.4 millimeter crochet hook, although you might need a smaller one or a larger one depending on how your crochet ink is so if you crochet really really loose you might want to use a tighter hook and if you crochet really tight you might want to use a little bit looser hook and i always recommend going 0 0.5 millimeters over or under until you find the perfect one and lastly we have some fiber fill which could also be used you can also use cotton or anything similar this is a polyester fiber fill but cotton also works i've seen people you know de stuff pillows so you know get creative Okay, so starting with round number one, first we're going to start by making a slip ring, which is also known as a magic circle. So you're going to hold the end of the yarn by your thumb and pointer, isolate these three fingers, wrap it over once, once in the back, and then a second time in the front, crossing over, making an X, and you're going to hold that tight with your pinky. So once you have that there, you're going to get your hook, put it under that first line of the X, and over the second line of the X. And then you're going to pull the second line under the first one. So you're going to pull it over like that. Now don't take your hook off yet. Because now you're going to re-grab that same line. And pull that through the hook on. Sorry, pull that through the loop on your hook. And there you go. That's how you do a slip ring. So for row one, we're only going to do eight single crochets into the slip ring. So to do a single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into the ring. Yarn under, which means you're basically going to grab your yarn with the hook, pull your hook out, pulling that yarn out, yarn over, and pull through both of the loops on your hook. And that's one single crochet. So let's try it again. Into your hook in, yarn under, pull your hook out, yarn over, and pull through both of those loops. That's two. So we have to do a total of eight. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's eight single crochets. Hold this right here. Hold it tight at the first single crochet. And you're going to pull that small piece of yarn, closing the hook. Oh, my hook fell. Closing the loop. You're going to use your stitch marker and put it in that last stitch you made. There you go. That's the end of row one. You should have eight single crochets in your slip ring. So starting for row two, we're going to do an increase in every stitch. So basically the increase means we're going to do twice of something in the same stitch. And that basically increases our stitch count. 
which is where the name increase kind of comes from. So we're going to start on the first stitch. So if you're new, a good way to practice uh, where your stitch starts is to count backwards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is our first stitch we need to go into. So you're going to enter your hook in, yarn under, pull your hook out, yarn over, and pull through both loops on your hook. And because we're doing an increase, we're going to go back into that same stitch. So as you can see, this yarn is coming out of this stitch. So we're going to re-enter our hook into that stitch, yarn under, pull our hook out, yarn over, and go through both loops on our hook. So now we're going to do that for every stitch. Let's try it again on the next one. So we're going to do one single crochet. So we can see this yarn is coming out of this stitch. So let's do our second one in the same stitch. There we go, two single crochets. So let's go ahead and do an increase in every stitch for this row, giving us a final stitch count of 18. Also, sorry, I said final stitch count of 18. I mean, final stitch count of 16. You guys are probably like, what type of math are you doing, Caleb? I don't know. I don't even know. So that's two in our last stitch. Don't forget to put your stitch marker because that is keeping track of how we are doing. And now let's move on to row three. So for row three, we're going to single crochet one in the first stitch and then single crochet two in the next stitch. So we're going to do one, increase, one, increase, one, increase. And we're doing that for the whole row. And the stitch count at the end of this is going to be 24. So let's do that. We're going to start with one single crochet. And then we're going to do an increase in the next stitch. So it's one. Going back in the same stitch, that's two. So let's do that again. One single crochet, and then two single crochets. And we're going to be repeating this repetitive process. Okay, big words. I don't know if I used that correctly, but we're going to be repeating this until the end of the row. So just one single crochet, increase. One, increase. And our final stitch count should be 24. Take your stitch marker out and re-add it to that last stitch you crocheted in. And there you go. That's the end of row three. For row four, we're going to do two single crochets, then an increase. So two single crochet, one, two, increase, one, two, increase, one, two, increase, one, two, increase. And you're going to repeat that for the whole row. It's the same thing we just did in the row before, but instead of doing one increase, we're going to be doing two increase. And our stitch count at the end of this row should be 32. So one, two, and then an increase, meaning we're putting two in the same stitch. Try that again. So one single crochet in this first stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then an increase in the next stitch. And that's how it's going to go for the whole row. So one, two, increase, one, two, increase. Your stitch count at the end of the row should be 36, and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Anyways, remember to add your stitch marker, and now let's go to round five. For round five, we're going to do three single crochets and then an increase. So it's going to be one, two, three, increase, one, two, three, increase. One, two, three, increase. One, two, three, increase. So one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet, three times, then an increase. So let's go and how to do that. Very similar to the previous rounds as well. So one, two, three, and then an increase. that one more time so one two um i have to go all the way two three and then an increase so now we're going to repeat that for the remainder of the row so just one single crochet one single crochet one single crochet three times and then you're adding an increase in the next stitch your stitch count at the end of this row should be 40 Yes, that's correct this time, 40. And I'll be meeting you at the end of the row. Okay, everyone, so now it is time to do row six. So for row six, you're going to do four single crochets and then an increase. So 
one, two, three, four. So that's four center crochets. I'm going to place an increase in the next stitch. So one, and then entering my hook in that same stitch, two. Let's do that one more time. So one, two, three, four, and then an increase in the next stitch. So we're going to be repeating that for the whole entire row. Your stitch count at the end of this row should be 48. I'm going to meet you all at the end of the row as usual, and then we will move on to row seven. Okay, so that is the end of row six. Yes, that's the end of row six. Now it's time for us to write. <laughs> now it is time for us to start row seven. <laughs> you good? I, I, I feel like I'm the only one laughing, and you all should also be laughing with me. I don't know what's funny, but it's it's funny. So we're starting now. We're now starting row seven. So for row seven, you're going to do five single crochets and then an increase. So one. Oh my hook fell. That's awkward. So one, two, three, four, five, increase. One, two, three, four, five, increase. So let's go ahead and start that. Very similar to all the rows beforehand. I know I keep saying that, but they're all similar. And I just want to make sure that you are you all know that because I don't want you to get confused. So I'm going to re-demonstrate it every time. So one, single crochet, two, single crochet, three, single crochet, four, single crochet, five, single crochet. So you're gonna stop at five and add an increase in that next stitch. Let's do that one more time. So one, two, three, four, five, increase. And we're gonna repeat that for the whole row. Your stitch count at the end should be 56, five, six. I'm gonna meet you all at the end of the row and hopefully we all did it correctly so that we can move on to the next step. Okay, so that was the end of row seven. We did five increase, five increase, and your stitch count should have been 56. Now, row eight is going to be a little bit different. So everyone, hold on to your cowboy hats because it's time to learn a new stitch. <laughs> okay, so for row eight, you're going to slip stitch in once in every stitch. So how to do a slip stitch? That's such a great question. Thanks for asking. So to do a slip stitch, you're going to enter your hook into the stitch, yarn under, Whoa, pull your hook out, and then you're going to pull that first loop, the loop at the front, through the loop in the back, if that makes sense. I guess you, you can see it visually. So I'm, I'm going to show it once, and then I'll explain it, because I don't know what I'm doing. Just like that. So I'm going to say it now in word form. So enter your hook in. Yarn under, pull your hook out of the stitch, and also pull that same loop you just pulled out of the stitch through the loop that's already on your hook. And that's that's what a slip stitch is. Now this can be do this now. What am I saying? Now this can be hard to do at first. It can be hard to do as an expert. It's just a hard thing to do in general sometimes, especially if you're using a tiny, tiny, tiny hook. So if you're using a tiny hook, good for you going out there and you know, doing what most of us can't because, yeah. So it's just lip stitching like this. And as you can see, it's making this nice little, you know, this nice little texture on our project, which I actually very like. I like this a lot, so. I also love this yarn color, like the caramel color. I think that was a good color for the body. I, I also didn't have a lot of colors to choose from, but... Out of the colors I did have to choose from, I do think this was a good one. So kudos to that. And it also does look like cardboard. I I don't I didn't think about this earlier, but like this is like the same color as the caramel candy. <laughs> and I guess that's what the name caramel comes from, I think. So that's cool. Um I'm gonna meet you guys at the end of the row. 
So I hope you know how to do a slip stitch by now. Just enter your hook in, yarn under, pull that loop out of the stitch, and pull that same loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Oh, well, that's a nice way to explain it. I don't know why I didn't say that earlier, but you know, I'm glad we all got it, especially for those visual learners. So kudos to you for learning. New stitch. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna meet you guys at the end of the row now because I'm sure you're tired of me talking. Okay, so I am done with the end of row eight. We slip stitch once in each stitch. Your stitch count should still be 56 because we didn't add any stitches or take any away. So if you have less than 56, definitely go back to see if you accidentally skipped one or you slip stitch twice in the same stitch. So I know you all probably thought that was some tedious work, but just go ahead and mentally prepare yourselves for row nine because now we're going to zero crochet once in each slip stitch. Don't look at my crusty nails. Look at the project. Don't look at my crusty nails. So as you can see here in your project, you have these little loops in the front. I'm pointing to them right now. So that's a little loop. That's a little loop. That's a little loop right there. Those are your slip stitch. So you're going to enter your hook through those, which is going to be a little hard for some of you, including myself. Use your nail to pull it back. Just, just stick it in there. <laughs> just stick it in there. Wow, this is definitely a humbling experience. Okay, my hook's in there. Sometimes you just, you just gotta push it in there. So this is your slip stitch. It should only be one loop because we didn't add an extra yarn over. We just want, we only pulled through one loop, meaning we're only going to have one loop here. So that's a big thing I wanted to stress because I didn't even notice that existed until right now. So look at us learning together. Like that's like some bonding. So once you have that in there, you're going to do a classic yarn over. So just yarn over. Sorry, you're going to do a classic zero crochet. So yarn over, pull your hook out of there and then yarn over and pull through both of the loops on your hook. So let's try that again. So enter your hook in that slip stitch. I really have to use like both of my hands for this. Like it's crazy. Yarn over, pull through that loop. Yarn over and pull through both of the loops on your hook. And we're just gonna do that for the remainder of the row. This row is probably gonna take you a little bit of time to do. That's okay, but just push through it because I know you can do this. I'll meet you at the end of the row. This is probably going to take me some time to do as well as you. So let's, we got this. Go team. Okay, that was the end of row nine where we did a single crochet in every slip stitch. Your stitch count should still be 56 because we did an increase or decrease. So if you're wondering what the purpose of that was, as you can see, there's some sl I'm talking way too fast. I am sorry. If you're wondering what the purpose of that was, as you can see, there's a little indent at where the stitch is being made. This is so when we start working up, it makes it super easy for your gnome to sit. So now it sits right like this. When you work up and once you make the body, this can sit super well. So when you want to place it on your countertop or when you want to place it on the shelf, it's not falling over. So it might have been tedious work, but it's definitely going to be worth it. So now for the rest of the body part, we're going to do one circle crochet in each stitch. We're going to do that until our project measures four and a half inches tall. So to do one circle crochet in each stitch, you're basically just going to do <laughs> one circle crochet in each stitch. So one, 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 and just do, why did I say it like that? I'm just going to do one circle crochet, one circle crochet, and just do one circle crochet in each stitch until your project measures four and a half inches tall now you can use a ruler you can use a tape measurer i know some phones have a measuring app on them so get one of those handy and i'll meet you all once we finish that and we get to start working on the head hello everybody i hope you are going well i hope every, all is going well it's probably been like two seconds since the last clip but it's been like a good hour over here so maybe not maybe 30 seconds but i have our little cat tape measure this is so cute Whoa, that scares me every time so um so the thing we ended off the body by crocheting four and a half inches tall 
Now, a quick word of advice, you can do yours. More than four and a half inches tall, you can do it under four and a half inches. I'm, I'm doing mine a little bit under four and a half inches because I want to make like a little a little stubby potato baby and that's going to be literally so adorable. And that's one of the things I love about crochet because you there's literally so many ways you can turn the project into like your own and like you can add your own personality on it, add your own twist, creativity. There's literally so many ways. So don't be afraid to, you know, think outside the box. This is the box. You need you're in here. You need to be out here, outside the box. That was that was inspirational, guys. I, do you feel inspired? I kind of feel inspired after that. <laughs> anyway, so mine's going to be a little short and stubby because that's the way I want it to be. So don't bully my little gnome baby. So now we are officially starting with the head. So the head is now where when we are going to start closing the gnome. And this top part is going to be technically where the head is. So yeah, play close attention and let's do this. Okay, so row one. By the way, we're now, I know we're in halfway through, but technically because now we're closing the body and head, we are restarting the count. So we are now restarting the count by row one. So row one of the head is, it's, it's a little confusing, but I'm going to try to explain to you in a more simpler terms, if, if you're following along with the pattern, it might be a little bit more difficult to understand. So I would suggest watching this whole row first and then going back to see if you understand a little bit more. So I'm kind of going to work with you as we do it and then I'll try to explain it at the end. And hopefully this will be good for the visual learners and the audio. How do you say audio learners? I don't know. Audible learners. Sure. Let's go with that. So we're going to single crochet in the first stitch. So everyone do one single crochet in the first stitch. Good. I'm giving you a second to do your one single crochet. Okay, now we're going to do a single crochet decrease. So the way I do my decrease is I enter my hook in the first loop of the first stitch, enter my hook in the first loop of the next stitch, yarn over, and pull that loop to the first two loops on your hook. That should leave two loops on your hook. Then yarn over and go through both of those. I'm going to take that out and do that one more time. Just for those of you who are seeing this for the first time. You're like, what is going on? Okay, so you're going to insert your hook in the front loops of the next two stitches. So front loop for first stitch, front loop for second. Yarn over. Pull through both of those two loops, yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. And that's the stitch. So it's called a decrease because we're making two stitches into one, decreasing the stitch count. Now, the next step is to single crochet in the next two stitches. So one, two. Now we're going to do another decrease. So first front loop, front loop, yarn over, pull through both of those, yarn over, pull through the two loops on your hook. Now we're going to single crochet once in the next stitch. Now this part is where we start to do our repetitiveness. So just to help you out, I'm going to put a stitch marker here so we do not get confused. So get a stitch marker and go ahead and put it in this stitch right here. But do not confuse it with the stitch marker you have marking the rounds. So maybe use a different color if that's going to help you out. So the repetitive part is going to be one single crochet, decrease, two single crochet, decrease. And we're going to repeat that. So one single crochet, decrease, two single crochet, decrease. You got it? Thumbs up. I'm hoping we got that. <laughs> and then your last, and then you should have one stitch open at the end, and that's going to be one single crochet. So let's go ahead and work this out. So one single crochet, decrease, two single crochet, <coughs> decrease. So that's basically the repetitive part. Let's do it again. So one single crochet, 
decrease. Two single crochet. One, two. And then a decrease. So we're basically going to do that for the whole row. I'm going to do it one more time. So one single crochet. Decrease. Two single crochet. decrease and we're just going to do that for the whole row leaving one stitch open at the end which will be one center crochet if that was confusing for you i definitely would recommend going back and re-watching this little this row if it's your first time doing decreases that can totally be confusing for you and especially because we definitely did a little bit earlier and then start a repetitive row that can also make it confusing for you as well and it's totally okay to be confused Go ahead and just rewind this and you can re-see how we did it and it might make a little bit more sense for you. If you're following along with the pattern, I hope this made more sense for you as well. And our stitch count at the end should be 42. I will meet you all at the end. So as you can see, the stitch marker from earlier, I removed it. You don't need that anymore. That extra stitch marker we added on in row one, go ahead and take that out so it doesn't confuse you anymore. The only stitch marker you should have is the one that is marking your rows that we've been using the whole pattern. So for rows two through four, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch. Very similar to what we were doing earlier when we were building the height. This is also going to be building the height so it doesn't have a flat head. It's going to give it more of a round head and that's what we want. So just for rounds two through four, one single crochet in each stitch. I will meet you all at the end of the rounds. At the end of the rounds, yeah. I was like, wait, English for a second. I'll meet you all at the end of round four where we get where we get to start round five. And just as a reminder, the end of round four and round two, three, and four should all still be 42 single crochets. We're not increasing or decreasing during these rounds, so your stitch count should not change. I'll see you then. Okay, so it's now time to start row five. Round five is not as complex as round one, so that's good. We're going to do five single crochets and then a decrease. So one, two, three, four, five. And then our invisible decrease. So front loop, front loop, yarn over, go through both of those front loops, yarn over, two loops on hook. Do that again. So one, two, three, four, five and then front loop front loop yarn over go through both of those front loops and then yarn over two loops on hook we're going to do that for the whole row so that's actually pretty cool this is the end of row five your stitch count should be 36 single crochets so now moving on to row six through eight we're going to do one single crochet at each stitch so for the next three rows rows six seven and eight we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch your stitch count should remain 36 since we are not adding or taking anything away i will meet you at the end of row eight okay so we're at the end of row eight for row nine we're going to do four single crochets then a decrease four then a decrease so let's go ahead and do that i don't know why i have my hook down like acting like i'm not gonna crochet but okay so one two three four decrease oh, decrease and then one two three four decrease i'm going to repeat that for the whole round and our stitch count at the end is going to be 30 and this is row nine for those of you following along in the pattern okay so we just finished row nine doing four single crochet then a decrease for the whole round so now for rows 10 through 12 10 through 12 we're going to be doing one single crochet in each stitch and your stitch count should stay as 30. i'll meet you at the end of row 12. Hey everybody we finished row 12 congratulations yay I hope you're all happy. Okay, so now let's get into the knit tea, a gritty. So 
I'm going to like the video cannot be an hour long and basically the whole head is a very repetitive process so I'm just going to explain it to you all okay I do this whoa that was some magic okay let's start playing around with the light settings anyways so for row 13 we're going to do three center crochet decrease for the whole row then we're going to center crochet once in each ditch for the next three rows for row 17 we're going to do two center crochet decrease for the whole row and then do three and then do one center crochet in each ditch for the next of the three rows for row 21 we're going to do one center crochet decrease for the whole row and then do three rounds of one center crochet in each ditch so as you can see we're basically repeating it every time we're just doing one less center crochet before the decrease on those rounds and then for lastly row 25 is just going to be one decrease six decreases basically decreasing in every single stitch which will leave you with six stitches left so rewind that one more time to really you know soak in what i just said and then after we are and i will meet you guys when we get to do the nose and the beard i would also recommend you start stuffing your project now and then continue to stuff it as you close your project because the smaller your hole gets the harder it will be to put stuffing in there and you don't want to have to take stuff like take your project out as stuffing and then re-crochet because that's just wasting our time so start stuffing it now and continue to stuff it as we close this is what we have to do i will meet you all when we get to do the nose and the beard this is my little baby my baby gnome it's a little it's a, it's a little potato yours should be super tall if yours is super tall that's correct i'm purposely made mine tall i mean i purposely made mine tiny like a baby because i want it to look like that so don't judge the baby okay so now it's going to work on the nose the nose is actually going to be very super easy it's basically like doing the body but just in five rounds like that's how simple it is so we're going to do our magic slip knot slash circle which you should know how to do from earlier but i will do it slowly just in case you forgot so for round one we're going to do eight single crochets into this ring so one two three four five six seven and eight now hold this part tight and close your ring oh actually let me for some reason mine is backwards which is very concerning okay there you go close it now there we go don't forget to add a stitch marker i'm gonna use green this time you know to switch things up you know so for round two you're going to do one single crochet then an increase one single crochet then an increase and your stitch count should be 12. So one single crochet, increase, one single crochet, increase, one single crochet, increase, one single crochet, crochet, and then an increase. And that's the end of row two. Now for rows three and four, you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch. This is, oh, what am I saying? <laughs> what? Okay, one single crochet in each stitch for rounds three and four. Your stitch count should be 12 because we're not doing any increases or doing any decreases. So your stitch count should remain the same. And now it's time to do the last row. So for row five, you're going to single crochet in the first stitch, decrease in the next. Single crochet in the first stitch, decrease in the next. We're going to do this four times. So we're going to fasten that off. Hook out. So now you're going to sew your nose onto the body five rows before the head starts. So you're going to count up until you start doing your head. So for me, that was about, I believe, this row right here. So I'm going to put the nose right there. You're going to sew that on there, and then we're going to go in. Oh, that's actually, wait, whoa, that looks really cool, actually. Look at the face. I was not expecting that. Okay, anyways. 
So you're gonna put the nose there and then we're gonna add hair around it. But I'm gonna show you how to do the hair. So just sew the nose on and then come back to the videos and I will help you with the beard. Okay, so it's now time to start the strands. This is going to be very, very fun as I have never done this before, but hey, I did one and look at that first try. That's actually so good. So I would love to re-show you the example photo, but my laptop doesn't really want to see. Oh, it's working today. Wow, we love that. Wait. Okay, yeah. It hasn't been working all day. So this is the goal to get the beard to look like that in some sort. So you're going to want to cut about eight inches. I'm just eyeballing it. You're going to want to cut about eight to 12 inches more or less because you will be trimming them all to the same height regardless. So you, it's better to have it longer than shorter. That's what I'm gonna say right now. Better to have it longer than shorter, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert your hook behind the stitch like this, put it back out like that. So your hook should be behind the stitch. So go behind and out like that. Now you're gonna, <clears throat> wow, my throat. Now you're going to, Grab a loop and pull it behind, just like this. Wow. Oh, well, only let one line come through. Yeah, so you're going to even them out. So this is about even. Now you're going to do a double knot. Not one knot, but two. If you do one knot, there is a good chance these will come out. So that was knot number one. This is knot number two. Boom. So now, Basically, you're going to just twist and unravel your yarn. So you're just going to twist it the opposite direction from when it's tweeted. I believe the term is untweet the yarn. But you can kind of just like pull. You see these little tweets? Just pull them one by one apart. And this one isn't really that tedious. It's kind of fun to do actually because it's not something you get to do every day in your crochet life. You know, like... Like this isn't in much projects, so it's kind of fun to do. And it's a really cool technique. I like, I actually really do like this. So I don't know. I don't know about you, but I kind of like this. I suggest you start from the top, then work your way towards the bottom. If you start at the bottom, sometimes the top doesn't get unraveled. And then you have to like re-unravel it when your tweeds are already out, which is a lot harder to do. So I'm here, I'm untweeting this. Okay, that first one, pull down. Second one, pull down. Third one, pull down. Fourth one, pull down. And as you can see, it's looking like this. So if you need to watch that one more time, go ahead and rewind it. I'm gonna show you how to trim it super quickly. So you want them all to be the same length. If you want, you can get a little bit of water to help flatten them. That was the pattern suggestion, guys, okay? And you get your scissors, and you're basically just going to get them all straight and just go in and trim them. So I want them to be about this height. I'm just going to go in and trim them all to be about this height. Look, see, you can be a barber and a crocheter. Double, period. Look at that. Double the work, guys. Just go ahead and add barber to your resume. It should look like that. If you want, you can re-untweet it a couple times. And I'm pretty sure the more you mess with it, the more fuzzy it will be. So be get creative, guys. I am actually do like this. I'm so excited for, to see how it ends up looking. This is the end of today's tutorial, and I will meet you with an outro. Hello. Hello. It's me. I have returned from the dark abyss. What a pattern. I don't know. Every pattern we have done, it just slowly, progressively gets more complicated for me to show i <laughs> i was literally struggling at times i'm sure you guys could tell when we did the slip stitching i could not get my hook to fit in the stitch and that was literally that was that was a very hard time for me on camera and i was like everyone's gonna see this and they're gonna bully me and they're gonna put comment they're gonna start commenting about this and i was just like oh my goodness i can't do this anymore but we worked through it and that's what crafting is about you you find 
a problem and you work through it anyways and you overcome you overcome and achieve greatness so anyways congratulations for finishing go ahead and give yourself three pats on the back one two three no more no more pats no that's all you get just three um anyways please go ahead and check out the pattern down below there is a link it's super simple you just click the link and you're there you can get this pattern you also need the pattern to make the hat so the pattern also includes how to make all of the different versions of the hats there is a fall version a christmas version and i want to say a halloween version as well so it's like a three-in-one combo it's a one-stop shop what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing so i don't know i want to keep talking to you guys but i have nothing else to say and if there's nothing else to say there's no need to keep the video going so <laughs> we have come to the time where i have to leave again and i know it's heartbreaking every time and i literally cry every single time it's not even real crying fake tears do fake tears i'm a phony don't even believe me, but. <sighs> okay, snap it together. Snap, snap, snap it together. But before you go, I have three important things to say. One is I looked up a fall joke. And let me tell you, it's a good one. You're going to be dying, like cackling. You'll be cackling on the ground. But before I see the joke, be sure to check me out on my account. My name is Kayla Party. My social is at Crocheting Worlds. Go ahead and check me out on YouTube. TikTok, I'm most active on Instagram, like everyday posting. Everyday posting on Instagram, check me out on Instagram. If you're watching this from my own account, Crocheting Worlds, go ahead and check out Annie's Crafts because they're the reason this video is even possible. It's a collaboration, they're giving me the pattern to show and everything. It's 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 pretty awesome, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So yeah, anyway, it's a joke. <laughs> I forgot what the joke was, I have to look it back up. Wait, <laughs> I have to look it back up. I forgot the joke. Okay, so here's the joke. I'll, okay, I'll I'll say the I'll say like the joke question, and then I'll give you like a second to try to like think of the answer. You're probably not gonna get it, but I'll give you a second anyway so you can try and then accept your failure. That was really mean. Anyways, what do you call? <laughs> okay, here's the question: How do you fix a broken pumpkin? with a pumpkin patch <laughs> hey guys i think it's time for us to go now i hope you all enjoyed the, the tutorial i hope you all enjoyed the tutorial if you have any tips for my tutorial or things that i can do that would be a little bit more helpful for you to understand let us know in the comments we would love to hear your input that sounded sarcastic but i was not being sarcastic i literally made the tutorials for you guys so if there's something you want more help on from talking too fast if you need more examples let us know we are here for you. Anyways, I will see you all in the next video. It's time for me to go. Have fun. Thanks for watching. <laughs>